Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today, Soaring High with Drones and 3D Printing. We have Quantum Systems with us today and Shapeways is supporting this wonderful webinar today. Uh, with me, I have Steve Wirt, who is Director of Customer Success at Shapeways. And I have Sebastian Settler from Quantum Systems, who is joining us from Germany. From here, I will take, I will let them take it and introduce themselves. And oh, by the way, I'm Rhonda Gee, Director of Marketing Communications at Shapeways. We will be taking your questions throughout the webinar so please put them in the chat and we will answer as many as we can if we don't get to everything we will uh, follow up with you after so sebastian and steve i will let you take it away so i'm going to start thank you for the introduction Rhonda. um yeah as you learned i'm sebastian from germany working for the company quantum systems we are based near Munich, which is quite close to Oktoberfest. I hope I hope you know it. And I just have one 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 question to all of the, the the audience. Please don't ask any questions about soccer from yesterday because I can't <laughs> answer this. So yeah, that's that's all. So please, Steve, continue. Okay. So right off the bat, like I just kind of see that first screen. What does the acronym VTOL stand for for drones? <laughs> That's a good a good question for the start. So, VTOL means vertical takeoff and landing, and the E in front of it um, means electric. So it's electric vertical takeoff and landing UAV, which means that yeah, basically it's it means what the words say. So we can start and land vertically and fly like a normal plane. Oh wow! Okay, so it's kind of similar to like almost like a helicopter aspect and being able to take off and land. Yeah, exactly. That's that. That's it. So, we 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 take the advantages from a helicopter to have just a little little space, like five to five meters, to start and land, and the benefit of airplanes to fly fast, fly long, and uh, fly long endur endurance. So, yeah, that's that's our combination, and that's the benefit of our products. Good. So I think we can start presentation right now. Absolutely. Um, if the first the first side is about the uh, about you Steve yeah so this one's just pretty much to see how much people know about drones right so like you can see kind of my drone that I have here in the background um, pretty basic DGI just used for fun um, I actually crashed it about two weeks ago <laughs> um, so still learning how to fly it but uh, yeah just really more to get like the idea right I think a lot of people know about drones they've seen them they use them but really don't know um, too much about like all the different features and what you can use them for so, I love the second the second answer option. Super, perfect. Whoever chose this, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, that looks like it's our most popular answer. So, with that, I think we can go ahead and jump into the presentation. Yeah, perfect. So I will start. At the beginning, um, oh, that's a that's a slide of Shapeways. So I think you need to start. Yeah, no, just just a real quick, just so everybody knows Shapeways. By the way. Um, we're kind of that digital platform that can make it so that any kind of 3D printed file you can bring to life. Just a quick overview, over a million customers, 20 million printed parts, um, and obviously globally, again, Sebastian's checking in here from Germany. Um, so uh, just to kind of give an overview of who Shapeways is. So, and with that, let's talk about who Quantum Systems is. Yeah, thank you. Um... So the first slides will be a little boring, to be honest, but I think it's important to give you some kind of introduction who we are and what we do. So we were founded in 2015, and I forgot one thing in the presentation. Our first Shapeways order took place in the beginning of 2016. So it's, it's already more than five years, the relationship between Quantum and Shapeways. And I, I could not count the parts we ordered all, over all those years, but it's a lot. It's really a lot. And it's just a short overview. So as you can see, we have uh, several products we will focus later on. It started all with the Trinity in 2016. And then later on, we have Vector and Scorpion and some um, partnerships in US, for example, with Alterion. And yeah, in 2021, you see a very important mark. It's the Shapeways webinar today. It's my first webinar, and I hope uh, everything works out fine. 
So let's go to the next sheet. If my if my pedal works. Just a second. Uh, yeah, it, it works now. Uh, basically, the, the same card that then you showed us. Um, it just should show that we are also um, selling drones worldwide, or we try to sell them worldwide. Um, even in the US, we have a lot of customers, and for example, Border Patrol and big farms that use our drones. Drones. So yeah, we are selling over the whole world. Now, Sebastian. You said like reseller network. Can you go straight to Quantum Systems and buy a drone, or do you actually need to buy it through a reseller? Um, in general, you actually need to buy it by a reseller because, yeah, it's um, to be honest, it's a lot of work to this direct conversation with the customers, and we are quite focused on the product itself. So, for us, it's super important to have um, high quality and. Um, uh, mm, very good self-learning resellers that know everything about the drones and they can take more care about our customers so it gives a um, more value product to the customers um, because we from germany we we don't know what needs there are over the world so it's better to have a u.s customer who is supported by a u.s reseller in our opinion i see so it's almost do what you're good at right you're good at building drones these people know their market yes. and they're good at getting them what the customers need that's why they're going to go to the reseller network. Okay, thanks completely. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Good. So this is this is a very cool thing I would like to show you. Um, okay, it's our slightly new building. We 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 live there since one year, and the coolest thing is that we have our own heliport on top of the roof. So we can do all the testing and all the test flights. We just go upstairs and with the elevator and then fly, and that's super cool. Um, yeah, I think if you work in drone business, it's a lot about passion. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's always cool. I think, as you said at the beginning, everyone knows DJI. A lot of people have drones at home for, for just flying in the garden. And all of, our, all of our employers love drones. And since we can fly from the rooftop, it's super cool. And to show visitors, yeah, always impressive. So that's what I wanted to show you. That's an interesting question. Let me get the question <laughs> out to the audience. OK, it is now there, and everyone can answer. We'll give everyone a second. Honestly, I would have thought consumer if, if you were to ask me you know, a couple of years ago. But now, with like Amazon and all these big companies, like I'm almost thinking delivery might become start becoming one of the bigger ones. But again, I don't know. What are you do, basing it on? What would people know or what drones are actually doing? So it's an interesting question. I'm liking the answers. Yes, yes. Good answers. Good answers. <laughs> yes. This, yeah, this mapping. One, perfect, right? perfect. I think our whole company is, is watching. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think that's a good yeah. time. But yeah, mapping first, consumer second. Yeah, I think it's 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 a it's a lot changing over the past of the over the past years. And as you as you mentioned, delivery is for sure a big big market in future. I mean it's the, the, the legal rights, it's difficult, especially in Germany, it's super complicated. If you want to fly over cities, for example, it's it's just a mess. Um, but in general, there are so many options, and that's that's why we choose drones for business. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so we just we don't just focus for one option, as we can see later on. We have several drones for several um, for several options of need. So yeah, that's that's our market. Sebastian, we have a question on camera mounts for drones. Could you talk about the different types of cameras? Yes, it's on a slide later on, but we can we can Perfect. talk. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I would say let's let's put it a little in, in five minutes because then we will see every, all the all the different uh, cameras we have, uh, even with pictures. Because if I just say something without pictures, you can't imagine. Yeah. True. Okay, I'll let you continue with the presentation. Okay. Perfect. So. Uh, the first, the first picture. This is this is my baby. It's a Trinity. Um, it was our first product, and it's just to to give you an idea what our drones look like. So this is the Trinity 
um, above a forest, and it's our yeah this this complicated letters E V tall fixed wing. Uh, I think we need to figure something more easy out. It's it's not really fluent, but um, yeah, it, it it says what the product is, and it's it's made for large scale mapping. So we can map large areas, and and that's what it, what it is for 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 agricultural use or or uh, construction sites. Uh, yeah, that's that's what it is for. And let's switch on to our next product, which is Vector. Um, this is the, let's say, more professional um, product. It's for governmental use. It's even longer endurance. And the biggest advantage is that it is used with a gimbal system. So the question you asked me before is which type of cameras we used. And one of them, or several of them, are gimbals. So like you know from DJI drones, just, I hope, a little better and bigger and more zoom options and infrared, for example. So we can equip the drones with several cameras. And Vector is especially used for um, gimbal systems. And if I'm telling something about Vector, it's easy to skip to Scorpion, because Scorpion and Vector is a two-in-one system. Uh, so you can switch from Vector to Scorpion within just a minute. And then you not have a VTOL, but you have a copter. And, um, at the beginning, Steve, you asked me what is what is the advantage of of a VTOL system, and when our company was was founded, it was yeah we need a, we need UAV we need VTOL, but there are some cases you need um, copters as well, and that that is what Scorpion is for, and that's when we can we have two in one solution, and it's good for customers that they have two in one and just need to learn how to use one system and have two, so that's the advantage. So when you say two and in one system, do you actually take off the wings and put on the, the rotors? Exactly. So we have one, um, let's say, high value um, center part of the system. So the main fuselage is, is where all the um, expensive electronics are stuffed in. And then you can just uh, demount the wings and put on the copter arms and press the fly button again, and everything is fine. So same batteries and same camera systems same main body of the plane and just the wings are exchangeable and the wings are obviously not the those high expensive parts i mean there's a motor inside but it's it's very cheap to have this two one uh, two in one solution fascinating so you're essentially getting two different types of drones when you buy the vector scorpion wow it, exactly so i mean you always can decide to buy just one if you want it's better than buy nothing but <laughs> we would we would suggest to buy both of them because they have different different types of, of fields where they work very well. So yeah, that's when you can decide to use both of them. Um, okay, there are more questions coming in, but yes, I will focus on um, Sebastian, what is the wingspan of the fixed wing system? So isn't it, isn't it on the, oh, it's not on the slide. <sighs> <laughs> so Trinity is, is about, uh, okay, don't let me lie. Uh, Trinity is about 2.4 meters oh, and wow. Vector is, slightly more 2.8 i think yeah so it's not that big because our focus is always to 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 avoid problems with the regulations because you know if the drone is getting more and more heavy you have to you have to be sure that you are allowed to fly and if you are above 10 kilograms it's just more easy to get license okay and or, are, or even below yeah are the drones waterproof or under or able to go underwater Okay, that's that's an easy question. They're definitely not able to go underwater, so it's it's, it's that's that's not the case. And waterproof, mm, it's a thing we are working at. So, the Trinity at the beginning was not designed to be waterproof, and um, I mean, if there is light rain, it won't fall down the sky, obviously. But you should come home. You should fly home and and pack your stuff. Um, but for the Trinity, the thing is, if it rains, you won't get good images anyway. So it doesn't make sense to fly during rain. And for the for the vector, it's different. Um, I mean, this is governmental use, so we are still working to make it more and more robust and to get it more and more waterproof. So yeah, we are working on an IP certification right now, and I hope we will finish it soon. And the last question, and then I'll let you get back to the presentation. Is the Quantum Tron not sold anymore? 
who asked this question? There are some, <laughs> there are some really deep into it persons in the chat. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, the Quantum Tron was, was a, our, I think our first product, but it was not really a product. It was just a big flying prototype and we sold some of them. And then we, we just got the feedback from the market that our Trinity is, I mean, it, it is much cheaper, it is, it is smaller, it is easier to use. In it, and it has almost the same fields of use. So it doesn't make sense for us to support two platforms which are basically the same. So that's why we decided to stop Tron and move forward to Vector and Scorpio. Good, then next slide. Okay, this was the slide I, I, we, we left. Um, it's just a short overview. I think, yeah, Trinity, as I said, five kilograms, Vector, seven kilograms. And I don't want to get too deep into those technical details because yeah, what we are here for is 3D printing. So I would say, uh, let's move on. Um, yeah, Rhonda, the question you asked me, what types of cameras we, we offer? Um, here we have a quick overview. Um, so you can see some Sony cameras, you can see Mikasense cameras, and as well a LiDAR system. So we, are well, we have very many different options. And on the bottom, you can see some sample pictures. Um, what we, what we, which data we get out of the drone, because um, yeah, you know I'm an engineer, so I'm basically super, super happy about drones and technique and 3D print and stuff like that. But for the customer at the end, what counts is definitely the the images, so the outcome. So that's very important for us, and that's why we offer so many different camera systems. Now, Sebastian, when you're switching out the camera system, do you need to use a different part to switch it out, or all these are easily switched out um, on the different types of drones? Uh, that's that's a good question. A good question. Um, I saw a video last week. I think we posted it on LinkedIn that it takes 3.5 seconds to switch the Trinity payload camera. So it's almost like a Formula One box stop. Uh, not for, not the ones from Red Bull, but some other <coughs> companies. So it's three seconds. It's just uh, plugging it off, plugging it on, and that's that's it. So that was the focus to make it super easy for the customer. Oh wow! Good. Um, yeah, I think I, I said a lot about this this slide. It's that that it's a two in one um, system. Just that you can see it again. It's it's this main body and exchangeable wings and and copter arms. So. Yeah, let's let's move on. Yeah, this is this is a crazy slide that our graphics uh, guy <laughs> did last week. The, the the right top looks a little like a, like a hammer shark. I don't know. Um, it just should show you that also for the vector we offer several different uh, payload options, um, basically different uh, gimbal systems, but as well the the RX one Sony camera and the lidar as well. So. Yeah, it's just a big field we can use the vector for. Sebastian, we have another question. What is the maximum wind that the vector can operate within? I've, I think at, at the start, it's 50 meters per, per second, but it depends. Um, it depends very much of the if it's constant wind or if there are just some some peaks. And we have we have an intelligence flight management systems which detects the wind, and then uh, it will decide if it's safe to fly or if you have to wait, for example, five minutes until the wind gets a little less. Great. Also, is it possible for Trinity to be used for surveillance in non-government government industries? Um, someone is looking for a better solution to integrate aerial mapping. Mm, yeah, so right now we just have like imagery payloads, but it definitely would be an option to integrate video payloads into the Trinity. And maybe there are plans in future to do so. Um, it depends. So it's it's always like if there is the need from the market, then we will decide to, to integrate everything. In general, the Trinity has the capacity to carry, let's say, around about one kilograms of payload. So it's definitely possible to integrate almost every camera system. Uh, yeah, so I would say yes, it's it's possible. So please contact us, and we will try how <laughs> we can help you. Great. I hope I will get some money from the marketing team now. Let's, let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a another poll question. This is our last one for the day. 
We'll give everyone a moment to answer. Looks like we have a good distribution. Yeah, perfect. Great, and before we jump to the next slide, we have a question on how do you test the reliability of 3D parts used in your drones? Sorry, I didn't get the first words. Uh, how do you test the reliability of 3D parts used in drones? Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Thanks for the question. Um, we test a lot and that's all. So um, it's sometimes, mm, in governmental sector, to be honest, it's it's hard to convince the customers to trust 3D print. But um, our flight testing team is uh, super busy every day. So we fly every day. We fly during wind. We fly during hot weather. We have several test teams. Even in US, we have a test team. Uh, they test during high temperature because in Germany, it, it's not easy to find that high temperature. So we do a lot of testing, and not just during flying, but also in our offices. And yeah, that's that's how we move on. And um, for sure, there are some parts which is not possible to replace them by or to manufacture them in 3D print because they are they do not withstand the load. But most of the parts, to be honest, for drones in this class, let's say above 10 below 10 kilograms, it should be possible to to use 3D printed parts. Before we move on, do you have applications with 3D scanners such as Faro mounted into the drones? Let me read it. I mean, our our 3D scanner is. I think I think this question is about lidar. I think so. So it's 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 a quite new product. We we offer it in two months, I guess. So yes, we can 3D scan everything um, below the Trinity. And if you are interested in it, there's, I think this is a quite cool video on YouTube. And yeah, it's the heaviest payload for the Trinity. So we had to put a lot of effort that it works. But right now, it's, it's a good product. And I'll let you move on. OK, let's see what the next slide is. Oh, that's me on the left side. <laughs> yeah, um, that's how it all began. I think everyone in this in this um, presentation knows these kind of printers. So it's usual FDM printers, and that's how we all started in with quantum systems. And right now we have four, no, five different FDM pr printers at our business. And it's, I mean, every engineer mm, loves these printers because you can design over day print it overnight and the next morning you go to the business and you have your parts. So we still use it quite often. And the question is, okay, why do we use Shapeways as well? And this is what we see at the next slide. Um, where I showed you um, two parts and the left one on the top left, uh, I can show you as well when I switch the camera. Uh, okay, I think it works better. Ah, perfect. So stop presenting so that we yeah. can see your camera a little better. Yes, perfect. So I brought some parts with me because I think that's more impressive than just looking at a stupid sheet. So this one was printed in our in our company. You can see it, it is shiny. And I think what you not can see are th those layers, but everyone knows it. There are some layer shifts. And on this, okay, in this setup, you can see how ugly it is. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's it's a good working prototype. For, for printing it overnight, it's perfect. But if it gets serious, so we maybe we want to sell it or we want to fly with it, we order it at Shapeways and then we get these parts. And I mean, that's that's a difference, you know? I mean, look, look at that. <laughs> I hope you can see it as good as I see it, yeah. Oh yeah, that's so you, you can really see that the, the Shapeways are more for that kind of end use, end stage prototype, um, where the in-house FDM is really going to give you just form, fit, and function. So. Exactly, exactly. So for us, it's, um, I mean, we, yeah, as I said, we were founded in 2016, so we are not that big. And especially at the early years, we we didn't have those high selling numbers. So it's, 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 not, it's not a use case that we buy always injection molding molds and stuff like that. And that's why we use these parts, um, because um, 
normal customers cannot cannot uh, recognize if this is that this is 3D printed because it looks like serious production, and it has the uh, mechanical uh, strength that it works. So it's perfect for us. Where else do you print parts in? Good question. So um, for FDM, we basically use PLA. And that's basically it because it's fast, simple, and, and easy to work with. And the shapeways, we have, let's say, two favorite materials. Um, in general, we use um, this, uh, let's, yeah, like it call, it's called on the homepage, versatile plastic. So this PA12 SLS material. Why do we use it? Because it's fast, cheap, and lightweight. And for most of our products, it's strong enough. Um, yeah, so for example, this part is printed out of um, versatile plastic black. And, and I think most of the parts that we order are built out of this material. Um, for the vector, I think you saw on the pictures that the vector's main color is gray. And as there is no gray um, versatile plastic, we moved on to multi-jet fusion. Um, the advantage of multi-jet fusion is that it is more strong. And I think the surface quality is even better. And it's a little more heavy, but we can optimize the shape of the parts, and then it will it will be the same. And yeah, and sometimes we um, use other options from Shapeways, but that's just normal, always versatile plastic and multi jet fusion. Perfect. So I think let's move on to the next slide. Um, okay, let me let me pick up this um, sample. So this is this is quite a cool part. Um, this is a radio link we, we, we use for our vector, and this is the, the multi-adapter mount. And I think you can see um, this one is really hard to manufacture in, in these, let's say, old manufacturing methods. And it looks, okay, in my opinion, it looks super cool. You can design on your own. And it, it, it bends a little if you put it in, and then it's fixed. So that's super perfect and yeah, it gives us a high value feeling for the customer. Oh yeah. So it looks like, kind of like bionic and we will have something like this later on as well. Yeah, it looks like a, almost like a futuristic organic part. Um, yeah, exactly. So that's, I mean, it's not just that 3D print is super fast and, and cheap as well. It's some, it has this, this, this coolness. You can, you can have this nice modern shapes that always look like bionic or lightweight, and yeah, that's that's a good advantage. So ne next page, um, this is our basic business, let's say. So on the top, you can see white parts. Um, I don't think I need to show it to you. It's it's a little small. Um, so that's how our development works. We we design something in our CAD, and then usually we print it overnight at our business, and the next morning we decide it works. And then we ordered the shapeways. In this case, it was versatile plastic, so the white parts on the top. And then we do this whole system integration test. So we mount everything together, check if the cables work and if the, the whole system fits together. And then we go the next step and order, in this case, CNC milled from aluminum. Because sometimes, you know, it's not possible to use 3D printed parts because there are some limits concerning the strength. Um, but Without these samples, it would be super expensive because uh, uh, CNC milled samples are always much more expensive than those 3D printed parts. Sebastian, and, what is the tolerance when you print with Shapeways versus doing it in-house? Uh, the tolerance is that the Shapeways parts fit and the in-house parts doesn't fit. So, <laughs> no, we, I mean, usually we don't measure it, you know, but um, yeah, the tolerance is much better with the shapeways parts, especially in the in the Z direction, obviously, because yeah, it's it's super easy for for you to print those different difficult to reprint uh, diffi difficult shapes in SLS, and for the FDM, it's it's always you need a lot of support, and and then mm -hmm. there's bridging and all those stuff, uh, so it would not work for serious production with FDM, no way. And talking about tolerances, I mean, it's later there's a slide about it, but sometimes we need those really well-fitting prototypes for serious production. And then we always order SLA parts from you. So those are these, these really good fitting parts. And 
yeah, for for example, the 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 last stage before getting to injection molding is always SLA parts. Great, thank you. Yes, this is my favorite part. I, I need to show you. So, as you as you can imagine, I need to clean my desk. As you can imagine, um, drones are always about flying weight. So we need to extend endurance. We need to extend uh, payload weight. And to do this, it's the best option to reduce the all the the aircraft weight. And this is what I want to show you. This is the old part. It's about, I think, 23 grams made out of versatile plastic black. And it's just, a, it's a shield mount for the antenna. So it will be it will be covered by, by metal foil, by 0.2 millimeters metal foil. So it doesn't have to take that much load, but it, it, it needs to keep the shape. And then we decided to, just two weeks ago, how can we optimize it? And that's the result. Yeah, so I think this is, this is, I mean, everyone in the company just comes to my desk to, to watch these parts. And I hope you can see it. That's just stunning. So it's it's amazing. It it don't break, it's it's it saves eight grams, so it's 30% lighter. And it looks so cool. So it's 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 just a little sad that the customer can't see it because it's uh, completely built inside the plane. But this is a super, super option to optimize weight. And I think in, in future, we will do a, mo a lot more in, in with these parts just to try to optimizing it, make something like a honeycomb, like it is right here, um, to make it just lighter. Good. And Sebastian, how long does it take to get parts from Shapeways when you place an order? Too long. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it depends what material you order. You know, um, in general, let's say two weeks. I think that's that's a good that's a good guess. Um, I mean, you have these these super fast options to to order um, it, it, within one week, I guess. Um, but in general, we we plan to we plan the parts to have it in two weeks. And for us, it's okay because we have we have a lot of work, so we can we can focus on other products during this these two weeks. And yeah, it's it's definitely faster than. I think most or all of the other um, competitors from Shapeways because, I mean, there is a reason why we use Shapeways and that's definitely one of it. So next part. So um, some slides before I talked about bionic parts and um, these are um, old parts. Uh, they are from Tron. So yeah, this one question before was not that bad. Oh, that's funny. The camera gets completely... <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's all just a trick. So what, we will just focus on this one. So what we see here, it's, it's shape optimized with a special software. So how we start is we make just a, a rough surface model of this part and load it into our software. And then we enter all the, the loads that are, that are put to it, for example, here and here and here. And then the shape optimizer optimizes regarding weight and strength. And yeah, this is a great option. It looks um, super, super cool. It saves weight. And it's definitely the only possibility to get these parts is order it uh, via SLS, for example. Well, Sebastian, what are the typical software you're using to design for parts? Yeah. Software? Um, Katia. We, we are completely, completely stuck into Katia. Uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's because of we are in the, in the uh, okay, here's a lot of movement right now. <laughs> yeah, because we are building planes, because, you know, like Airbus and companies like that are um, also using um, Katia. And at, uh, at our university here in Munich, we use Katia as well. So the most of our um, students, we have no Katia and we are very happy with it. And it's good to have these complicated um, designs um, manufactured with Katia. Good. Mean any autonomous drones? Completely autonomous. So I think, um, they are quite autonomous, so you don't have to fly them. You just have to put. It's. I think our marketing team calls it the one-button solution. 
Um, so you have to upload, you have, your, you have to plan your mission before you fly. And then you just have to press this famous start the flight button. And then the drone is doing everything on its own. So it is basically flying on its own. It's just that the legal regulations um, demand that you know how to fly the drone, that if something happens or if a, if a big plane is coming from the side, you have to know how to avoid a crash. But in general, if you have good weather conditions and you have planned your missions not into a tree, uh, the plane is doing everything on its own. On the organic design that you showed for light weighting, how much of the drone has that ability to be redesigned with that like um, honeycomb design? That's a good question. That's a question I need to ask myself and my team um, because yeah, we are right on the beginning of redesigning everything. Um, in general, let's say the vector is has a lot of 3D print parts, especially in the main fuselage. So um, I think there are at least 20 parts we can completely redesign. And for Trinity, it's a little different because you know, Trinity is, is completely into serious production and selling high numbers. So we have switched a lot of the parts into injection molding because of the price, obviously. And, um, but for Vector, we will definitely optimize a lot of the parts, especially in the fuselage. Because, yeah, even, I know for, for, for some people, five gram is like, okay, we don't care about five gram. But for us, every gram counts at the end because every gram uh, counts at the flight time, counts at the payload. So we need to focus a lot on this in the next times. So this is another cool project we have here is uh, what we have here is our airspeed sensor and the slide shows you just the different states of from where we come from during prototyping and what is the end result. So on the top you see uh, the first prototype it is a little big and a little ugly shaped but it is really it worked quite well but and it was super fast to manufacture so we just decided okay let's let's put everything together make it make it a product and test it and this prototype we tested for four weeks and then we decided okay the the general design the mechanics the electronics work quite well now we can make a slim version of it and then we go over several different prototypes and everything printed from sls and at the end we go to injection molding and the the last prototype before having these parts injection molded is sla printed to have this quite exact fit of all the parts Okay, this is what we, what we have seen before are the different payload options from a Trinity. I just said that not many parts of the Trinity are 3D printed. It's kind of a lie because it just focuses on the plane. So the plane itself is basically made out of injection molded parts, but the payload is completely 3D printed. Um, as you can imagine, um, the, 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 camera, the camera systems are changing quite often. So all every two weeks, there is someone coming to me asking me, could we please integrate this camera? And so we need, we need to be super flexible and super fast with integration. And the only option to, to get these is uh, printing it via SLS. And so all our seven um, Trinity payloads are printed and during, ser during serious production. So we, we order a lot of these parts. We, we, we send a lot of money to Shapeways to get these, to get these big white parts to our business. Iterations of parts do you go through uh, to get to your final working part? If my boss is watching, just one. Yeah, we, we always, it's, it's always the first try and then it's a success. No, um, I, th I think you, you, you saw it here. It's, it depends on the, on the complexity of the products, but we, it definitely makes us faster, um, no matter how many iterations we take. So, I mean, sometimes it's just two iterations. Sometimes it's, it's a one shot, but this is, to be honest, not that often, <laughs> but uh, it's the, with, with 3D printing, it's possible to have these many iterations because it's cheap and it's fast. So I think it's not that bad to have several, several iterations and every single iteration makes the product even better. So even if you think after the first shot, okay, it's perfect, maybe it's better to th lay it on the right side of the table, think two nights about it and take it on again, rework it, and then you have a better product. 
So this is one of our complex parts, and I think one of the last. So what you see here is um, our vector locking mechanism. Um, so all our drones are designed to, to build them up without any tooling, because we don't want the customer to use screwdrivers um, at the airfield, because maybe you, you lose it, or it's, it's just annoying if you, if you wear gloves. So our plan is to keep it super simple, and to, it's, it's not good to need a manual just to, to build up the drone. So that's why we, we designed these quick locks, completely 3D printed, and you see these gray parts, they are multi-jet fusion. And this was the ones, these were the ones we sold uh, up to now. And now we decided to change them to injection molding. And th these developments we do completely with this, these SLA parts. Um, they are not strong enough for serious production, unfortunately, um, because they are not, not even not stiff enough. Um, but for, for these final sample parts, before you spend $50,000 for, for mold costs, it's just perfect. And this is our, this is our biggest shape waste part. Let, let me bring it up to the table. Yes, <laughs> this is expensive. So what, what you can see here is our is a special mount for our ground control control station. And I think one year ago it was built from a student and he made it out of these cheap glass fiber plates built out of 20 different pieces, quite ugly and, and not really nice for the customers, sharp edges and not just just not a product it, it was like a prototype and then we decided okay uh, don't care about money let's let's make it nice and that's that's how it came out and it, it works super perfect and our customers are quite are quite happy with it because it looks cool and it's it's good to use it's just one single part and not 20 difference that might get loose so yeah that's that's our biggest our biggest part from shapeways now, Sebastian, how far away can the control unit be from the drone while it's out flying? It depends on the on the system. So I'm not a okay. I switched the camera. Let me switch. Yeah, perfect. Um, it depends on which system we use. Um, so um, as I'm not a marketing guy, it's always hard for me to answer these questions. But um, the vector, I think, is 7.5 kilometers range. And the uh, the Trinity, excuse me, Trinity 7.5, and the vector a lot more. Let's say a lot more. I, I think okay. 15 plus or so. Yeah. So please, for 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 exact information, you need to visit our homepage for technical specs. And uh, yeah, I, I need to focus on on technical design. Otherwise, we <laughs> we won't get drones anymore. That's all that I have in the question. I don't know. Yeah, that. yeah, perfect. <laughs> no. um, so, per person of view. So, um, I think that that's that's um, our drones are not made for it. So, I mean, for the for the vector, we have a live image from the gimbal on our on our tablet. Um, so that's kind of POV mode. So we can we can really have live image on our tablet during flying and for example watching driving cars or or crowds or something like that, and for Trinity it's not possible right now. So we have just these. Um, so after the flight we have these the images on a SD card or a USB stick, and download it and then um, um, uh, calculate a map out of it. Great. And I think your student designer is apologizing for the first version being ugly in the chat. <laughs> no, he, he is he, he's sitting there, so it's, everything's oh. fine. <laughs> Good. Oh, that's the that's the last slide. So no questions about soccer. That's good. No questions about soccer. But if you do have any other questions, please put them in the chat. We have a few more minutes. And in the meantime, Steve, I don't know if you have any additional questions. Yeah, actually, I think the, the biggest question I got for you is, Sebastian, when did you know you wanted to design drones? Uh, that's that's a good question. Thank you. Um, yeah, my I started with model RC plane flying with my dad at the age of five. So 25 years ago. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I think it, it was quite clear that, that that's my business. Um, but to be honest, right now, I don't do this hobby anymore because if you work 40 plus hours with the drones, at some point it's like, okay, let's do some other, maybe sports and not just, not just flying. But um, most of our employees are um, attached like me to, to these planes and we have a lot of model flyers and, and a lot of scale plane flyers. So yeah, that's, that's our patience. And that's, that's the good thing about the company, I guess. Yeah, it's it's great when everybody's passionate about what they do, especially starting from such yeah. a young age. Exactly. I thank you everyone for attending and thank you, Sebastian and Steve, for such a great webinar. We really, really appreciate it. You're getting lots of applause in the chat. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to Shapeways and we can always connect you with Quantum Systems if you have more questions. And everyone have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.